Hi everyone, I'm instructor Diana Gonzalez and we're going to go over borrowing part two, amortization or the repayment of loans. We're going to derive a rule for amortization and to do this we're going to look at an example that'll guide us through the derivation. The example is of a conventional loan for mortgages. We saw this example in the previous video. We're taking out a $100,000 loan to be paid off over 30 years with an APR of 6%. The question we want to answer is how much is your monthly payment? Now to do this, we're going to break it up into a few steps. First, we're going to assume that we let the money sit. We're not going to make any regular deposits and we're going to use the compound interest formula to determine what the total amount of the loan is going to be by again, letting it sit uh, and not making any regular payments. So recall, this is the compound interest uh, rule that we talked about in the previous video. Our principal amount is 100,000. Our interest rate is 6%. We're compounding monthly for 30 years. So in total, if we let the $100,000 sit, we'll have, we'll have to owe a total of $602,257.52. This is a lot of money. Now, in using this rule, as I mentioned already several times, we are not making regular payments. But in previous videos, we derived a rule that does take into account making regular payments. Do we remember? It's our savings formula. So the savings formula does in take into account making regular deposits. We can use this then to find our, mon our monthly payment. This accumulated amount is going to be the amount that we derived using the compound interest rule. So the $602,257.52. Now, in order for us to simplify some of our calculations, in theory, if we're doing this uh, on our own, we would want to use a more powerful calculator such as Excel. We don't really want to deal with stacked fractions. It can get it can become messy on single line calculators. So we're going to recall that I is the rate per compounding period. And in this case, it's 0.06 divided by 12, which is equal to 0 0.005. So we have 1 plus 0 0.005 time, or to the 12 times 30 minus 1 over 0 0.005. And you may also want to simplify the 12 times 30 to 360 months if you're using an online calculator. Now, once we solve for D, we get that the monthly deposit is 599.55. So this is going to be our monthly, our, our monthly deposit or the monthly payment. Now, Something that is really cool about this is this monthly payment, if we make the regular monthly payment of $599.55 for those 30 years, we make it again every month, this totals out to be $215,838, which is less than the amount that we derived when we were assuming that we were not making monthly payments. So this should make sense because as we've explored in previous videos, as you're making monthly, uh, as you're making regular payments, in terms of savings, money grows and it grows a lot faster. In this case, we're using the savings rule to pay off an amount. So the amount that we're borrowing or the, the amount that we owe will also decrease a lot faster than if we just let it sit. Now, from this example, we can derive the formula using the uh, similar techniques that we use to solve. We want to solve for D, that is the monthly payment. To do this, we can recall what we did in the mathematizing module. We want to isolate D, which means we want to divide out by this factor here. Since it's a fraction, I'm going to use the uh, concept of division as multiplying by the inverse to both sides. So here we'll have P times one plus I to the N times the inverse of the factor on the right hand side, and this is going to equal D. Now again, the way that these formulas are typically used, they're, they're used with powerful calculators such as Excel. So the way that it's set up right now, this is not very user friendly when we're using a calculator such as Excel. So what we can do is we can use techniques for mathematics and the one that we use here is we're going to divide the numerator and the denominator by the factor one plus i to the n. And in the denominator, since we have two terms here, Notice in the numerator, it's all multiplication, so it's just one term. 
But since we have two terms, I'm going to show how we divide each term by 1 plus i to the n. Then in the numerator, we'll be left with p times i. This is going to simplify to 1. In the denominator, this term also simplifies to 1, minus, and then instead of writing this as a stacked fraction, another rule in math is we can uh, move up the factor from the denominator to the numerator by making the exponent negative. So if we go back to our example, d would then be equal to the $100,000 principal times 0 0.005, which is the rate per compounding period, divided by 1 minus the quantity 1 plus 0 0.005 raised to the n. And again, n is the total compounding periods that we have. So that is the 12 times the 30. And this is a simpler approach. It saves us time from having to do the derivation, which is what we did in the earlier example, and we can simply plug it into this rule. So formally, this is what the amortization rule would be. We have D as our monthly payment, P as our principal amount, and then there are two different ways to uh, write the formula. One is more expanded. So I is the rate per compounding period, N is the total compound periods, or if you expand I, I is R divided by M. So R, where R is the rate and M is the compounding period and N is uh, the total compound periods, which is the compounding period times the time in years. Another piece of information of how I've used amortization is, so a common way to use the amortization rule is you go to the bank, you take out a loan, and you know how much the loan is going to be for. Then they tell you what your monthly payment is going to be depending on if you're taking out the loan for 10 years, 15 years, 30 years, or for cars, it's more like three years, four years, five years, or six year loans. Now, I needed to buy a car last year, so I'd already then taken Math 104. I used the amortization rule in a backwards way. I didn't know what kind of card I could afford. I only knew how much I could pay for a loan monthly. So instead, I rewrote this formula so that instead of solving for the monthly payment, D, I could solve for the principal amount, P. From there, once I determined what P was, I took into consideration that P, um, P wasn't going to be the the MSRP, so the ticket price of the car, I'd have to then subtract the amount of interest that would have accrued over time and also take into consideration the taxes and the fees from getting a car. So I subtract a couple thousand dollars and that is how I was able to get my Honda Fit. Hopefully this has helped you in making better decisions and when you find yourself needing to buy a car or a house, you can come back to this video and see what you can afford. Have fun shopping!